Hello, welcome back to our Wife Strengthening Series for Relational Wealth and a Relational Awareness, okay? This is the YouTube channel for the Beautifully Woven Woman. I am Alexis Piper, the lifestyle strategist and spiritual developer for women who are aspiring to boldly navigate through life's difficulties in a secure and sustained womanhood. This is the system of a woven woman, amen? And so let's go in with today's focus on standards to cherish. In this wife strengthening series for relational wealth and awareness, you are going to have to create standards to cherish. As husband and wife, okay, this is a two-team thing, all right? This is not just something you do on your own and just assume it's supposed to cultivate and come into your marriage. No, you have to communicate together, <laughs> all right? You cannot have wealth in your marital relationship if you have no communication, okay? So these standards to cherish is something that, yes, you're going to have to choose and to agree with yourself, but also to um, talk out with your husband so that you all can become on one accord, all right? You want to be on one accord with your husband. You do not want to be um, in division or strife um, with your husband. And so these standards to cherish are things that you're going to have to, um, you may be the one who originally has the thought for it, but then you have to um, talk it out and convey it to your husband. Okay, so there are going to be four areas that we're going to have to create these standards to cherish in. Are you ready? I know you are. Okay, four areas that you have to create standards to cherish. One, meaning we got to grow up. <laughs> I, that ain't even my number one. Let's just say that's a prerequisite to number to these four things. Okay, we got to grow up. Yes, I said gotta. We got to grow up. We have to grow up. Okay, let that be the prerequisite to these standards that you're cherishing for one yourself and for your wealth in your marriage and in your own awareness. You're going to have to realize when you're being petty, you're going to have to realize when you're being immature. Immature is a derivative of being petty. <laughs> okay, yes, it is. All right, so you're going to have to realize that and then choose to put childish things aside. It's a choice. It, it's a choice. It's a life-giving choice. The death choice, okay, the death choice, the dark choice is for you to continue to be petty and immature knowing that you're petty and immature. That's not a woe and woman system. That's the weary and worldly and immature woman system. And we are, not, that's, that's not how your womanhood is secure and sustained. That's not how you boldly navigate life's difficulties so that you are successful in your life and in your womanhood. That's not the way. In case you believe that, I just told you the truth. May the truth set you free. <laughs> okay, so the prerequisite to our four things is what? Talk to me in the comments. Type it in the comments. What is it? That's it. We got to grow up. We got to grow up. We got to grow up. Okay. We are setting childish things behind us. All right. Now, now that you have graduated from the prerequisite course, now you can come into these four things for a higher education that leads you to a high-end womanhood, marital and relational wealth, wife strengthening. Number one, no more tit for tat. <laughs> no more tit for tat. Tit for tat is you say this, he says this, he says this, you say this. Nobody wants to be quiet. Everybody wants to get the last word in. No more tit for tat. What is it? How is it helping? Let me just ask, how is it helping? Is it stroking your ego? Because ego, that ain't what's up. <laughs> That's not what's up. So no more tit for tat. That's just the standard now that you have chosen to grow up. To put childish things behind. No more tit for tat. Number two, no more this breakup to make up. Meaning, no more you go sleep on the couch. <laughs> or I'm going to sleep on the couch. Or I'm going to... Nah, nah. No more breakup to make up. 
that is a very immature and worldly mindset um, to relationships. You think it's wealth because you have bought into the lie that this makeup is just so full of passion, you know, and y'all have come back into one accord and into love and into bliss. But if you have not dealt with the reason why you broke up, if you have not dealt with the issues and the insecurities and the emotional um, um, lashing out and the anger and the rage and the, 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 all of those things that cause the breakup, you're going to be in that cycle and it's just going to repeat itself. So no more breakup to make up. No more. You go sleep on the couch. I'm going to sleep on the couch. I'm leaving. Um, I, no more just, you know, I, oh, I want a divorce and all of that breakup to make up. And then you'll be like, oh, we, we had makeup sex. <laughs> we back good now. Now, you husband and wife, the marriage bed is sacred. Why are you even having makeup sex in the in, in the in the in the Anyway, okay, that's what I'm trying to say. Why are you having makeup sex too? Anyway, the marriage bed is sacred. You should never, as a wife, withhold sex. Withhold you. That is um, a bonding. That is a spiritual connection. That That is a sacred space. So where you need to make up is not in the sex bed. It's not in the marriage bed. Where you need to make up is in the emotional wound, is in the verbal um, um Thing that you said that wounded that that wasn't right see where you need to make up is in the emotional and intellectual that's where you need to make up so that the marriage bed can remain sacred and undefiled see some of you don't make up emotionally verbally you know in those areas and then you defile your marriage bed by withholding or by saying, you go sleep here and I'm going to go sleep there. And then let's just get real, real. If you continue to not make up emotionally, spiritually, and mentally, relationally, you are creating poverty, which now allows your marriage to, um, to perish instead of prosper. Meaning, now you thinking of everybody else you looking at everybody else's marriage you you comparing your marriage to everybody else's marriage now you you entertaining the man at work who want who keep asking you to go out for lunch see now you entertain and see 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 no 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 in order to keep that sacred you have to say no more breakup to make up that's going to be a standard that i'm that we're going to cherish do you agree do you agree do you see how that can, um, that is a lifestyle strategy that can allow your marriage to um, flourish, prosper instead of perish? Do you see the difference in the mindset and the maturity level? I hope so. And I pray that that the Holy Spirit will continue to um, walk you through this because this is only a video, only that so long. But I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to nurture you and water you and mature you in that area. Okay, number three, number three for vows and standards to cherish in your marriage is rather than argue, you can do three things. Okay, you want to know what those three things are? Yes, you do. Okay, those three things are rather than argue, you can pause. And in that pause, what you're doing is being like, okay, why are we arguing again? How did this, what, 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 how did it even get here? Is it, is it that significant to be arguing about? To cause this disarray within us? Is, 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 is this, is this, is that, is it that crucial? So you're pausing to reflect, okay? You're pausing to be like, who told us that we had to argue? Who? What got us to this point? You're pausing to reflect. Self-reflect, not point fingers. Okay? You're pausing to self-reflect, not to point fingers. See, we got here because you didn't hear what I said when I was trying to say. See, we got here because you did this, you did that, you did that. That's not how you want to be talked to. If Treat others how you want to be treated. You may have heard it as, don't dish out what you can't take. <laughs> but the biblical principle is to treat others how you want to be treated. 
to love others as you love yourself. So that means you have to love yourself to go back to the prerequisite to choose to grow up. Go back to video one and go back to video two to deal with your insecurities and to check your four T's. Okay? You're pausing so that you can self-reflect, not to point fingers, to figure out how did you get here? Why are we here? Who told us we had to argue? What did I do? What did I allow build up? What, what did I mis misunderstand? What, what did I misinterpret? Those things, okay? The second thing that you're going to do instead of argue is pray. Yes, I said pray. Okay, because what prayer is going to do is to welcome in the a higher strength, a higher power, that of the presence of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, who is a comforter and a wise counselor. Okay, to, to a revealer of mysteries. If you can't figure out how did you get here and why I'm here, all that invite in the help, strength, comfort, counsel, revealer of mysteries of the Holy Spirit. You're going to pray for God to meet you in that moment. Meet you there. Meet your husband in that moment so that y'all can healthily get over this, walk through this, okay, and not stay put in that. Not allow it to trickle over, all right? And then the third thing that you have to do rather than argue is to process. Process what the Lord told you. Process what it is that you and your husband are trying to say to each other. Process what the end goal is. Process the future. Process you and your spouse outside of this moment. Process that. Envision it. Envision it. Envision it. Get it before you. What is the end goal? Okay, because you don't have to argue in your marriage. You might have disagreements. Yes, you may see things differently, but that does not mean that you have to argue. You choose. Is arguing more of a life-giving, wealth-generating element to your marriage? Or is arguing a wealth... Um, not a deposit, but a withdrawal, okay? It's arguing a wealth withdrawal from um, your marital bank. You choose. Y'all choose, okay? And I just want to let you know and remind you that you don't have to argue. You can allow the argument to be minimized by doing those three things because I want to let you know that pride is present in strife. So, if the arguing continues and the tip for tat continues, that means that pride is present. Strife is argument. Strife is dissension between two people. Okay. And so when pride is present, that's what it's going to create. Pride meaning me, 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 me. I matter. My feelings matter. All of, all of me matters. Pride is self-centeredness. So when pride is present, strife is also present, which means darkness and satanic influence is also present. Your flesh is present. Okay? All right? And so there, there is a way to allow that negative and wealth withdrawal presence to um, come into the subjection of the Holy Spirit's counsel, the Holy Spirit's presence. Okay, your woven womanhood presence. All right. All right. Now, number four, humility is significant. All right. These are we're going through the standards to cherish. And number four for wife strengthening relational wealth and awareness is humility is significant. I want to let you know that humility is not weak. Humility is really the strength and the courage and the confidence uh-huh. To be able to be meek, to be able to be reasonable, to be able to um, <clears throat> be teachable, to be able to be transparent, to be able to um, surrender, to be able to um, submit to the presence of God in the midst of the dynamics of, of what's coming against these standards that you want to cherish, what's coming against you trying to grow up. Okay. So humility is significant all right 
And what I mean by that, there are three things I want to go through and what I mean by that, okay? You don't have to prove. You don't have to prove your point. You don't have to prove yourself. You don't have to prove your, you know, whatever it is. You don't have to prove. Maybe that's freeing for you just to hear that. You don't have to prove your point. You don't have to prove who you are. You don't have to prove. Number two, you don't have to defend. You don't have to defend yourself. Christ is your defender. Okay? You don't have to defend your heart. Well, that's not what I meant. What I meant was, and that's okay to say that, but if you're doing that to defend your heart or to prove your point, then your posture is not right. Your posture is in pride. That don't sound good to hear, but that's simply the truth wrapped in love, okay? And so you don't have to defend. Humility is significant. See, when you're walking in your place of meek but strong, humble, confident, you are able to understand and become relationally aware with yourself and with the Lord, am I defending my heart? So now I'm trying to prove that that's not what I meant. So now I'm trying to prove that you didn't hear me correctly. So now I'm trying to prove that you don't get me. So now I'm trying to prove, no, 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 speak. No, no, you don't have to defend and therefore prove. You don't have to prove and therefore defend. All right, number three, humility is significant. Number three, no more moving in arrogance. And you might not even realize when you're being arrogant. But when you're being arrogant, it's when you can't be quiet. <laughs> you being arrogant is when you can't listen. You being arrogant is you keep wanting to hear your voice speak. You being caught up in the proving and defending. And not the pausing, praying, and processing. Okay? Arrogance leads to a fall. That's a biblical principle. Arrogance leads to a fall. And you're not trying to fall in withdrawing from your wealth with your spouse. You're not trying to withdraw from your wife's strengthening bank account. You're not trying to withdraw from your woven woman system handling life's difficult dynamics and life navigation. You're not trying to withdraw. You're trying to make deposits, okay? And so arrogance leads to a fall. Falling is a withdrawal. Now you might say, yeah, but the righteous fall seven times and they get back up again, all right? And, but what I'm trying to say is when the arrogance is the root of your fall and arrogance is not from God, it's not a characteristics of God. You can strengthen your legs. You can strengthen your sound. You can strengthen your heart. You can renew your mind so that you won't even be in the element or the temptation to fall in the first place. Okay? All right. Wife strengthening, wife strengthening, relational wealth and awareness. Our book, my book, relational uh, for this is wife strengthening. It's linked in the description box below. I pray that you will allow yourself to invest in yourself and, and renew yourself and strengthen yourself so that you can have a secure and sustained womanhood because who you are as a woman is the entryway to how you will be as a wife. So let's get yourself together and let's strengthen that so that you can have marital wealth all right god bless you i will see you in our next video in just a moment